TJ. He's hurting right now. Oh. An interesting move there. And puts it. Well, no. Just able. Only a two count. I looked, thought it was a three there for a second, Mark. But a very unconventional move there. I'll have to ask Hot Shot Johnny Devine what he calls that. I know that's a hangman's noose neckbreaker. He probably calls it me. <laughs> there it is. Three count. And I do believe Hot Shot Johnny Devine is feeling fine after dispatching T.J. Wilson in that British Commonwealth Tournament matchup. And our first match on today's show is a tournament tilt pitting two diminutive dynamos of Stampede Wrestling in T.J. Wilson and Ted Hart. with these two young guys in here this will be a quick one indeed both of these guys are very leap and quick as rabbits earlier in the tournament wilson suffered a defeat at the hands of hot shot johnny devine while teddy hart defeated mikey lewinsky of course we're running with a three-point system if you accumulate three points you're out of the tournament so wilson needs to win this bout in order to stay alive Collar and elbow tie-up in the center of the ring. Arm drag takedown by Wilson into an arm bar. Nice kip up there by Hart. Fireman's carry takeover and an arm bar of his own into a front chancery. Now he cinches in that side headlock. Of course, Teddy Hart with the wrestling genes, a member of the Hart wrestling dynasty, looking to add to that legacy here in Stampede Wrestling. Indeed, he's a little dynamo. And of course, Morrow, the only thing we're wondering about right now is both these guys, this is a perfect match. But once they start getting in with some of the bigger men, I'm a little worried. They know each other very, very well, having been trained in the Hart dungeon. In fact, uh, growing up, they went to the same school. This could indeed be a human game of chess, as a so-called living legend likes to say. And in fact, I venture to guess Mark, that a critical mistake will precipitate the end result of this bat match. Indeed, Moro, both of these men have worked out a lot in the dungeon. They know what it's all about, and it's just that one second that could mean the difference. And both of them are ring technicians. They also like to take to the air. There's a shoulder block by Teddy Hart. Drop down. Hart trips up, but recuperates in time to take Wilson over. Side headlock takeover now. Also raking the eyes there. I'm actually quite surprised, Morrow. We haven't heard much from the Pounders over in the other side there. Principal Pound and Assistant William Yates, the head assistant headmaster. Very quiet so far, which is good. Bending predicament here for Wilson. You're right, Wilson, a member of the Principal's honor roll. Teddy Hart with the cover now on T.J. Wilson only gains a two. And Teddy Hart has displayed a wide arsenal of suplex and high-flying maneuvers in this one, Mark. Absolutely amazing, Moro. In fact, I didn't recognize the one where he ran up the ropes. What the heck was that? <laughs> he perches T.J. Wilson high atop the ropes again, and he is going to take it to the air one more time. He is standing on the second rope now. Oh, and T.J. Wilson turns it into a top rope DDT, a tornado DDT by Wilson. Unbelievable. And he instantly turns the tables on Teddy Hart. Wilson grew up idolizing the late, great Owen Hart. And uh, it's something I don't usually do, but I have to commend WCW for allowing Bret Hart and Chris Benoit to put on a classic this past Monday on Nitro in honor of Owen. It was held at the venue where Owen tragically passed away earlier this year in Kansas City. And of course, Owen will always be forever young and forever missed by all of us here at Stampede Wrestling. Missile oh. dropkick by Wilson. And, of course, Wilson has to win to stay alive in the Commonwealth Tournament. Exactly. As you mentioned, if you lose, you get two points against you. A draw is one. Zero points for the winners. And something tells me Wilson may be going to the well once too often. Hart gets back up to his feet. Wilson's on the top rope. Oh, and Hart delivers a drop kick. That's got to hurt. That hangs Wilson up on the top rope. And now Hart going to the second rope. Wilson in dire straits right now. And there's a superplex from the top rope. The fans are the loving cover. it. Only a two count as Wilson at the last second able to lift the left shoulder blade. He is purely wrestling on instinct right now. Man, a lot of heart with that young man. He's taken a pounding. No pun intended, of course. Crossover now. Oh, and a 
forward Russian leg sweep. We're going up again. Earhart. Earhart about to be cleared for takeoff. There he is with a shooting star press. This should be it. Two, three, it's it. And Teddy Hart has bounced T.J. Wilson from the British Commonwealth Mid-Heavyweight Tournament with the shooting star press. A scintillating move puts Teddy Hart into the next round of the tournament. This, ladies and gentlemen, tag team action. 20 minute time limit. First of all, in front of me, from Florida, 262 pounds, the crippler, Rip Oliver. His teammate is from Canada, 265 pounds, Big Kelly Kanitsky. Their opponents, at a combined weight of 445 pounds, the fabulous, fantastic. Rick Hazard to officiate. And this tag team event, they're the Fantastics. Tommy Rogers, Bobby Gentry. Talking about Boston, of course. One of our really, I guess you could say, any city in the United States is a favorite. This really one of the favorites with its historical background and its lovely surroundings. WXNE with World Class Championship Pressing. That's Channel 25. Great to hear from great fans like Eddie and Maureen Mitchell from Boston, who really love World Class Championship Pressing and are right there at their sets every week in Boston. Well, let's get to the action right now as Kelly Kaniski will take on, who's going to take Tommy Rogers and Bobby Jeffrey first. Jeffrey would like to have Rip Oliver, the crippler, in there. A little high five, a little red, away we go, and it'll be Jeffrey. And Kaniski. Jeffrey trying to coax Oliver into an opening moment of this tag team event. So we're ready to go. Oliver's out. Kaniski's in. Jeffrey's ready to go. The tag team event. A great fantastic. <laughs> and Bobby Rogers wants to get a little adrenaline flowing too, and he does. And here's the exchange. And watch these fantastic with their timing and pacing. Boom! Right in on top. And now it's Tommy Rogers and Kaniski rolling, but Rogers rolls right with him. Maintains that arm pull. Really a great job. Speaking of Los Angeles. KDOC TV, Channel 56. Had a nice start from Joel and Barbara Smith. Great fans of world-class championship wrestling. Bobby Rogers, collision over the top. Hook. Hooked again, arm drag. Oh, those two young men, fantastic, are just as their name implies. They are indeed that. And the great thing, they don't get themselves in very, very good trouble because they are constantly working the corner so well. And Kaniski is out, and Rip Oliver's in, and that couldn't please Bobby Jeffrey more. And we're rolling on world-class championship wrestling from the Sportatorium. Tommy Rogers leading the cheers. Oliver. Working now. Bobby Gentry wants to take care of the crippler. Well, we saw the crippler with his shoulder breaker. And he really did a devastating job on Billy Haynes. Boom. Over the top. Watch out. The crippler into a body slam. Has him on the wrist. Here comes Rogers, the exchange, and they've got it going. That's a way to rip an arm apart. Get free now, or rather, Rogers down. The Fantastic. Bobby Jeffrey, meanwhile, working the crowd on the other side. 
in indicating to the crowd that hey, it's all right, everything is set, we're in great shape, and they indeed are. And of course, they, the Fantastics, would just love to find a chance to hammer out against their nemesis, the Midnight Express, for that American Tag Team Championship with the Express. You know, Hernandez, the Texas champion, Terry Von Eric, the American champion, and the six-man world tag team champions are the Von Erichs. Kevin, Kerry, and Mike. All right, Oliver's over the corner. Here comes Jeffrey. They've got him wrapped up. Watch this now. Boom. Jeffrey in with an arm drag after that fly drop kick by Tommy Rogers. And the Kaniski Oliver crew has not been able to move out of here. A sock in the eye. And Oliver has turned it around and got a sock in there again. So suddenly Bobby Gypsy is in trouble. And it was the Crookler with Oliver who did it. As you might expect. But Gypsy's back with Kaniski and back in charge of spinning this up. Here comes Tommy. Back in there. And the upper part of the arm of Kaniski is in pain and in more pain and more pain. Hold on, Tom. Hold on. Keep going. Hold on. Keep going. Well, Rip Oliver is trying to give his man some words of encouragement as Tommy Rogers slips out. Fires him back. Whoops. Tommy came off. But what's the line for? That's the great thing about the Fantastics. What, even if they kind of miss, they have an opportunity with their quickness and their great athletic ability to recover, stay out of trouble. They do most of the time. Kaniski now with Bobby Jeffrey wrapped up in a head scissors, and Kaniski going to pull out of that and do a little more damage over this corner. The exchange with Oliver, and they've got Jeffrey wrapped up. And I've been talking about the ability of the Fantastic to escape. Let's see if we can do uh, see how well they do that now. But Jeffrey doesn't want to escape. He wants to do battle, and he is doing battle. And continues to do battle. And rides on and on and on and on. Great move by Jeffrey. And he's got the Crippler walking away. The Crippler back it up and the Jeffrey going after him. These guys don't back off from anybody. There's a little knee. Here comes Rogers. He's ready to go and he is wound up. Tommy Rogers wound up. Up in. And over goes the Crippler. Tommy Rogers directing the attention of Oliver to the knee of Bobby Gentry. Big sock. Gentry goes again. In the corner, back up in there. Gentry now rocking another reverse clip. Here comes Rogers back in. Tommy Rogers reverse chin lock as he works on Crip Oliver. Well, Oliver has certainly been handled by these two. And Kaniski trying to get his partner to get a little closer so he can help out. One of the things you want to look for in the Houston, Texas area is World Class Championship Wrestling's Easter Spectacular. Houston, city of the bayou. Well, Oliver, good job right there, ramming. Tommy Rogers into trouble, and Kaniski comes in to help out. So an atomic drop. Kaniski hammers again. Big Kelly Kaniski, son of the former world heavyweight champion Gene Kaniski. He was a great one this time. He and Fritz von Erich used to have classic encounters. Lead to the midsection, and Tommy Rogers is 
Rip back to Misty. And the crowd goes for Tommy. <laughs> Kelly in a bear hug, and Tommy Rogers is in trouble. Now Kaniski and Oliver are having their fun. The exchange, and here comes the Ripper. The Cripper, Rip Oliver. Another bear hug. Oliver looked like he felt that worked so well with Kaniski in the crowd himself, and the crowd is still for Tommy Rogers. It is Kaniski with a backbreaker. On top with a count of one, a count of two, and a count of not quite three. Oh, that was close. What a tremendous move by Rogers at the last second. Kaniski makes a change. Here comes Oliver back. Tommy Rogers. Caught in this neat grinder of Kaniski and Rick Oliver. Once again, a bear hug. Again, hammering Tommy Rogers. Kaniski on top again. One, two, and not enough. Rick Hazard couldn't get back to count, but I think it probably did the best thing for Rogers. He had a chance to rip. Look out, Kaniski got him. No, Kaniski hammers Rogers on the head with his boot. And out, Tommy's shaking up again. Kaniski. Center of attention in was Rick Oliver's boot. Catapult to the body of Tommy Rogers. Rip Oliver looked like she, he might have a choke underneath there, and Rick Hazard trying to look inside. Oliver, very dangerous man. A crippler of more professional wrestlers than any other in the history of the business. And dangerous to be involved with him, particularly when he is cornered. Right now he's in command, and Rogers is trying to move him back to make the tag with Bobby Jeffrey, and he's getting closer. About two or three more feet. About a foot. They didn't quite make it there, but now the count is on Oliver. Kaniski comes in. He's got the neck lock. Turns it around, and Kaniski turns it around. Elbow, and Rogers still shaking up. Bobby Jeffrey going wild in this corner. Watch his partner to find him. Out of the crowd, and now here comes Jeffrey. And Jeffrey explodes all over Oliver. Jeffrey with Oliver flying. Great move by Bobby Jeffrey. Another one for Kaniski. Another one for Oliver. Great reverse elbow. Oh, Jeffrey is a man possessed right now. Everybody goes down. Kaniski's down. Oliver and Rogers. Rogers. And a dime to the floor. Tripler Oliver. Jeffrey now takes on Kaniski. Whoop. There it goes. Jeffrey down. Kaniski on top. One, two. Not quite for three. As Rogers just made the move in time. Well, what's fair for one is fair for the others. Oliver pulled the legs out from under Jeffrey. Now, the pile driver. And the bout has been called. We're going to have no contest here. Everybody out of command, out of control. The place double drop kick. And there goes Kaniski. And Rick Hazard goes out. And here is Mark Levent. 12 minutes and 16 seconds. Referee Rick Hazard has thrown out both teams. Double DQ. Disqualification. It finally just got out of control, but I can tell you one thing. 
I'd like to see these two go, these two teams go at it again. And speaking of going at it again, we'll be back to tell you more about World Class Championship Class and going at it in our next event. Next. Stay tuned. Weighing in at 230 pounds from San Antonio, Texas, Shawn Michaels. Ahí queda Michaels, la nueva sensación de Texas, All Surrounding. Quiere madrugarle Ken Johnson, van los dos llegando por allá, se cuadra bien. Con la diestra muy de cerca, la cara de Ken Johnson. Va a la toma de referee, luego castigo al brazo izquierdo, la palanca, da también un movimiento, Ken Johnson se va quedando. Para después derribarlo, tomando de los cabellos por la espalda. Michaels, este joven baluarte que salió de colegio convirtiéndose en profesional luchador. Allá va la vuelta, se va quedando y dando movimiento para terminar en el tapete azul del cuadrilátero en el cuerpo de Ken Johnson. Vaya agilidad, tremendo movimiento rapidísimo que ejerce el chamaco Michael frente a Ken Johnson. Es el castigo con este candado al ras del tapete azul del cuadrilátero, Michael frente a Ken Johnson. Ya hemos recorrido con la presentación en la apertura del asesino oriental disponiendo de eh, Dusty Goods, pero después el referee dio la vuelta al veredicto dando 